Hello and welcome to another Fantasy Premier League video. My name is Steve and welcome back to the first video of the 24-25 season. Now a couple of days ago FPL have officially released 20 prices for the new season and so I thought it'd be a great idea to do the first video of the season to discuss some of these prices, why I think soft pricing wrecks the game in terms of how strong the template comes and also is a good time to demonstrate some of the tools that I've been working on in the off season which you can see on screen. Now as such I've also turned on membership for the channel for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all replying to all of the comments last season was starting to get to a point where it was taking up many, many hours uh, to respond to, which is a little bit unsustainable moving forward. Now, I will always do my best to try and answer as many questions as I can each week, but becoming a member at any level of this channel will give you, will give you priority replies ahead of anyone else. Now the other reason I've turned membership on is to get a little bit of crowdfunding going to drive the development of the site which you, seen, which you see on screen. Either by keeping me caffeinated throughout the development, or if you are so inclined, you can buy a founders membership which will get your name enshrined within the website once it goes live. Now I will also be adding some additional perks to the membership levels as the season progresses as well. And any help you can offer is greatly appreciated. Now with that being said, let's jump into it. And remember to give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, especially if you get any value out of the following content. So what we've got on screen here is my version of a transfer planner now it is nowhere near complete yet but it is functional uh, to a certain degree in terms of different stats and ownership levels and various bits and pieces that it does show within what you would see as your normal transfer planning screen so in the top right hand corner I've actually introduced um, a new concept called rank tiers and the rank tiers are basically there to show the ownership levels of various players within the game at the various ranks out in the game so we've got a global which is just the entire game's ownership underneath that you've got competitive which is the top 250k or roughly two the top 2.5 percent of players within the game below that is noteworthy which is about the top 200k sage which is the top 150k distinguished top 100k and it keeps going up you've got elite which is your top 25k unreal top 10k premier top 20 players and so on so there is a few different levels that have been introduced into the software and at the moment I'm currently uh, showing prestigious which is the top 50k of all players last season and the ownership levels of the players for the top 50k now this is showing the template players so this is the top two most owned keepers the top five most owned defenders, the top five most owned midfielders, and the top three most owned forwards with the most owned players uh, starting in the team and the second stringers or the, the ones that fill out the rest of the template on the bench. So you can see here some ownership levels like Cole Palmer, one of the reasons that I think soft pricing broke the game last season. Uh, he was owned by 99.9% .9 of all managers in the top 50k. Erling Haaland owned by 99.2% of 
the top 50k managers and so on and so forth so what you can do here is click around the different rank tiers you could kind of see say competitive in the top 250k the ownership levels change Palmer doesn't change much it drops down from 99.9 .9 to 99.8 percent of ownership in the top 250,000 players so that's basically just a dead spot in the team last season the only difference you're getting there is whether or not you captured him Haaland was still up at about 97.1 percent anyway uh, we won't go too much into the different ownership levels right now because this is obviously last season's data as of game week 38 but this is the template team you can also go to the popular differentials which is now your if you take out the top two most owned keepers you now have the third and fourth most owned keepers in the game the next top five owned defenders the next top five owned midfielders and the next top three owned forwards so as you can see all the member all the ownership levels on here have come down a lot because these are the lesser owned players uh, in the in the game at as of game week 38 and then you've got another uh, option over here which is your low owned rank gambles which is basically your next set of 15 players behind the first two sets of 15 players now there's some little icons on screen next to the name that can show that shows you what the rank tier is that is being um, compared against and then what that player is in terms of your top three teams so the shield is your template players uh, your little ninja icon is the popular differentials and then the little dice icon is your low owned rank gambles now if you load up your team so this is actually my team as of game week 38 last season and i've still got the prestigious prestigious rank selected here which is still the top 50k so you can actually see where i've got template players so palmer being a template in the top 50k harlan being a template player in the top 50k isaac sun foden gabriel pedro poro all template players within the top 50k and then you can easily see my popular differentials that I've chucked in of Vicario um, and what else have I got in there no one else really uh, it was just <laughs> okay uh, just uh, where has he gone Vicario and then I've got some low owned rank gambles of Cucurella he was owned by 6.4% of owners in the top 50k and so on and so forth so that's the first tool that I have uh, chucked in to try and get a bit of an idea of what is the template at these different rank tiers what are the ownership levels and how can you differentiate your team um, amongst the template managers out there so the soft pricing last season uh, which is the title of this video does indeed I think wreck the game so a player like Cole Palmer who happened to be the top scorer in the game now the moment we're looking at a planning view here which is this little binoculars icon up the top if I switch it over to the season totals it'll show you the season stats for these players on the screen and you can see down here that Cole Palmer got 244 points last season which was the top scoring asset in the game and he actually started at five million pound which is actually ridiculous now to be fair to fpl he was a bench player for man city he wasn't getting any game time it's very unlikely that he was going to play for man city and they priced him at five million but as soon as he got sold to chelsea it became a starter and you could actually see how good of a player Cole Palmer was. He was woefully underpriced. Everyone bought him into the into their teams, as you can see by the ownership stats that I just went through. But that has a flow-on effect of actually having way too much cash available 
for your other options in the team and then it starts to get to a point where the ownership levels for the template team is they're just too high so Cole Palmer 99.9% .9%, may as well call it 100 right Harland 99.2% Sun 94.1% Foden 92.9% I mean 90% ownership this is just way 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 too high you can't once you build this team and you have all these players in your team you cannot differentiate yourself too easily and so therefore the template becomes way too strong you can't really get any rank gains or losses the only thing that's really differentiating your team week on week at that point is your captaincy choice couple of the defenders and probably your goalkeeper and that's basically it you really don't have much room for movement takes way too many decisions out of the game and you get twitter full of teams they just basically all look the same now last season's pricing was soft it was way too soft and so this season i'm really hoping that they address this issue and the early signs are relatively promising so what i've done here this is what i spent yesterday doing i'm just going to adjust this slightly so you can see it a little bit easier on screen but we've got harland on screen started last season at 14 million ended the season at 14.3 million and has been priced for the at the start of the 24 25 season down here at 15 million the most expensive player that fpl has had in the game I don't even think any of the old school legends even reached a level of 15.0 million. I think the highest might have been on Regot or someone like that was up around 14.8 or 14.9 million. So they have put out the most expensive price for a player for the 24 25 season. Now, this is a really good sign because this actually provides a bit of a decision for us managers to make now a couple of other players that are in the template team that have had price adjustments Havertz finished the season at 7.6 million is now in at 8 million so he's gone up in price but he's also been sw switched to a forward position meaning he will lose all the clean sheet points of which Arsenal how many clean sheets did they get? They got 16 clean sheets. So that's 16 points off of Havertz total that he will lose this season. As well as one point for every goal he scored, which was 13 goals. So if you add those two together, you got 29 point drop off from his 180 point total last season. If he did exactly the same stats for his new position in the forward role this year so they've bumped his price up his points tally will come down and so this looks like fpl are going to actually put in some more competitive pricing which will allow for a much for a much more diverse season of fpl Now, my audio software just kicked out for five seconds there. I hope you heard the end of that sentence, but I'll just continue on as if you did. Now, what I would like to see moving forward, and I'm not actually going to go through every single new price that was released by FPL because there were 20 prices. Some of them are kind of neither here nor there. I mean, there was three defender prices for the three promoted teams at 4.5, 4.5 and 4 million. Harlan's 15 million, Watkins at 9 million, Havertz up to 8, Tony at 7.5 up front, Mateta had a big price increase as well. Uh, so if we bring just him up on screen. So Mateta finished the season at 5.1 million and has now gone up to 7.5 million 
which is actually quite a big jump, but he did score 16 goals last season. Uh, came away with seven assists as well in a 165 point season. So it's another good sign that they are actually putting the prices up and they're going to make it a lot harder to play, hopefully. Now, what I would like to see for some other prices is someone like Cole Palmer come in at around about 11 million, maybe even 11.5. Salah came in at uh, 12.5 this season. So if I just switch over to uh, I had him in my team. So we just go my team last season. He came away with 211 points last year, which is 30 points shy of Cole Palmer and has been priced at 12.5 million. Now Salah actually had a relatively, I mean, he still hit 200 points. Um, for the season but he did have a bit of a quiet season and so 12.5 is a good price as he could come away with 230 240 points uh, this year obviously depending on what happens with Arnie Slot and the changes in at Liverpool but I don't see any reason why someone like Cole Palmer can't come away with another 200 point season and if they price him somewhere at like nine nine and a half million he's probably just going to be in everyone's teams and so I think the main thing that I would like to see from the remaining prices that need to be announced is some very aggressive pricing in order to give us much more decisions and a bigger premium bracket to select from. So in the past we've usually only had like two or three premiums. I think last year we at the start of the game we had Salah 12.5, Haaland 14.1. Kane was 12.5 I think before he um, left Spurs and then I think the next most expensive player was maybe De Bruyne at like 10.5 million now that's a very small premium bracket I'd like to see like five six maybe even seven players up in and around 10.5 million plus and a bit of an adjustment in the med middle priced bracket of say the 8 to 10 million kind of range of prices so good good early signs from FPL with the announcement of some of the early prices obviously we can't talk too much about actually how good those prices are until the rest of the prices are released I'd like to see Foden up around 9.5 million you know 9 to 9.5 8 million's too cheap. He finished a season at 8.3 million and got 230 points. I mean, this, these are very high scores for relatively cheap players, which will result in a very, very strong template forming very early in the season. And then those templates just stick throughout the rest of the season. So just to touch off a couple of the final, uh, <clears throat> the final things of, um, that I've built within uh, the transfer planner on screen. I've introduced a whole bunch of icons to try and give a sense of where these players are ranked amongst all the Premier League players in the game. So if we just take Cole Palmer, for example. So next to each of the stats that are relevant, there'll be a little icon with a double up arrow, which indicates the rank within all players in the game now Palmer came away with the most number of bonus points last season so he was ranked first you'll see over here uh, Salah got 24 bonus points for the entire season which was ranked 10th so each of these little double up arrows next to each of these stats gold scored gold minus xg assist bonus bonus point system etc will give the rank of that player amongst all other players and if they are in the top well in the top five goal scorers so the top three will have a colored icon so you can see here Haaland has got a little purple uh, football which says that he is top of the golden boot race scoring 27 goals 
the blue icon for Cole Palmer. He was the second top goal scorer in the season last year. Phil Foden actually came in fourth, so he gets a non-coloured or a silver-coloured um, golden boot race icon. And these icons, with their colours, will give a bit of an indication of where they are sitting in the ranks across the whole season. So Palmer came second for goal, uh, goals scored, second on the bonus point system. He came third for assists. And I've even introduced a marksman icon. So if you have a little look at Phil Foden over here, the goals minus expected goals stat is actually really a uh, stat that measures the finishing ability of that player. Foden scored 8.85 goals more than his expected stats uh, suggest and that was actually the top of the game last year. So he was actually the best marksman across the game. And so when you're in the planning view here without all of these season stats you can very quickly see next to the names that the icons can show you where these players are ranked as the game progresses and as it will shift week to week as we move throughout the season. And all right, that's enough for the first video of the season. So don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a, cam a comment to tell us what you think. Thanks for watching and I will see you all again next time.